Come out. Come in. Come in. I've done a bit of dabbling in underwater filming over the years from Barbel, Pike, Roach, and even Chub. But I've never been able to capture Bream until now. And I want this to be next level. I want to be a pioneer. So over the last couple of weeks, I've been developing an underwater filming system and it has to be perfect because I'm going to be lowering this thing into 30 feet of water. So if there's one slight leak, the pressure at 30 feet deep is high. So one slight leak, I've wasted my time, effort and money. But I think I'm at the stage now. The device is ready. I've done the checks. It's time to go fishing. Right then guys, we're here. We've got two days at this. I'm more than excited to do some bagging. Let's get the stuff out and let's go. The first thing I noticed was these divots on the bottom. They were everywhere. And we actually get to find out what caused them a bit later on in the video. The second thing was a definite undertow, which would prove to be a good and a bad thing. I decided to start off on the meth feeder just because it would give me good accuracy with having to cast long range and good presentation, or so I thought. First cast was a good one, landing right in front of the camera. You can see the wafter there, look. Second cast was even better, right on the money. But it would reveal a problem. A problem I wasn't expecting. The bottom was soft sediment, about six inches thick, so when the method feeder hits it, it was burying itself and the bait. I had no idea this was even happening, so I just carried on. After a fishless first hour, I decided to implement about 15 small balls and micro pellets over where I was actually fishing. This is where the undercurrent would start to work in my favour, dragging the scent of the bait off into the distance where it would be picked up by a massive shoal of bream, which honed in on it in less than 10 minutes. I also think the noise of the bait had the exact same effect of drawing the fish into the peg. Now the fish have turned up and started feeding, I finally realised what all those small divots were. When the bream come in to pick something up, they create them. And these divots were everywhere, which means I'm fishing right on top of the bream's feeding ground. It was a literal sea of divots. That can only mean these fish feed here on a regular occasion. And it was quite apparent that's the case, because now the peg is full of fish. But because I was fishing the method feeder, and it was burying itself, I wasn't getting a single indication. So to me, sat on the bank, I was just assuming the fish weren't there. But in fact, the entire shoal had turned up. And these fish went to work. When people say you need a lot of bait for bream, I understand why. These fish proceeded to completely turn the entire peg over, causing that much disturbance that for a good hour the camera couldn't see a single thing. Just the occasional silhouette of a bream munching on anything in its path. So it's been five hours, I'm fishless, despite the peg being rammed with fish. So just for the last hour I actually decided to change tactics and just fish a normal open end feeder with like a 12 inch hook length. I'm clipped up to the exact same area and I managed to land it right in front of the camera. The only problem being too many fish started feeding so you can't see what's happening. I put two halves of worm on and on the very first cast... That was a bite. That was a bite. I'm in. I'm in. Yes, and it's a bream. Tell me. You have to tell me. That's mad how quick of a switch to... A feeder. I don't believe it. I'm in. Yes. Literally switched to a feeder and instantly was we into fish. I'm just not getting the range I like. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. 
How about that? First fish. Oh, come on, some fish out there now. Come on, big lad. There you go. There you go. As soon as it sees this net, it'll be off. There you go. Yes, he's done it. Surely I have to have captured that. Surely. Look at that. For an absolute beautiful. Yes. An instant response to fishing an actual feeder. Look at that for a slab. Yes. Oh, I'm off at moon with that. Let's keep going, man. We could get a couple of these on go. We're laughing, aren't we? After being there all day and with only one fish, I decided to call it quits. I'm cold, I'm wet, and I'm eager to see if I've actually captured anything on the camera. So I went to retrieve the camera and completely unbeknownst to me, the shoal was still there. And if I slow it down here, you can actually see how far the plume created by them feeding goes. There must be 200 pound of fish in the peg. I got to my park up for the night and reviewed the footage and it was safe to say I was gobsmacked but it was a great learning opportunity and tomorrow would be the day. So it was an early night ready for some bagging tomorrow. I arrived back on the bank eager to catch some fish. Seeing how fast the fish responded to the small balls micro pellets yesterday, that was the first thing I was going to start with today. and then just cast straight over the top of it and hope that my theory is correct. Watching the feeder fall through the water made me realise that the hook length and bait would ravel up straight on top of the feeder. Improving on the efficiency of this rig would be a swift change to a stiffer and shorter hook length, so next time I might try that. But this didn't deter these hungry fish. Eight minutes after the last ball of micro pellets goes in, the first fish arrives and honed in straight onto the corn hook bait, capturing the exact moment it hooked itself, picking the bait up and trying to swim away only to realize it can't. So it sits for a second to try and dislodge the hook, all the while my rod tip isn't moving. It eventually decides to bolt off finally alerted me of its presence. That was like on the drop right there. I've put the camera facing the other way today because yesterday there seemed to be like an undercut, an undertow. And that was no good. The, all the bottom was like going into the camera, whereas this time it's going to go away from the camera. bigger than I thought. Boom, they turned up. So that dinner bell, no problem, didn't they? Hey. Come on, these are the ones that refuse to go in the net. Come on. At least I've been rewarded for my efforts today. Jesus Christ. You've never fought Bream harder in your life. I promise you. You sent in there, yes. Yes. First fish. Have a look at you. messing about look at that beautiful fish right there there you go with the peg now full of fish and a semi-effective rig 
and knowing exactly how many fish was probably down there, it was time to get my head down and do some bagging and make up for the day before. We're in again. That was right in front of the camera, that one. After we've seen some it. No messing about. There's loads of fish out there. The amount of lime bites I'm getting is ridiculous. This is probably like a perfect day for a bit of bream fishing. This feels like a better fish. You know, I seen a comment of a day and it was like, um, I'm not really interested in bream fishing because they don't give a fight, man. You come and try and catch some of these bad boys. I'll show you a fish that can fight. Look at it. It'll take line off you and all sorts. Come on, was it? You say it sees the net and it's like I'm out of here. Look at that. Taking line off me. How about that? You just ain't caught the right bream. That's what you ain't done. Come on. Get your head up. Get your head up. Give up. There you go, that's a proper one. That's a proper one right there. Beautiful. I could be in for a good day, you know. I learnt a lot yesterday. I'm gonna turn all that. Look at that, that's a proper slab right there. Be five pound that. It will be five pound. Look at that for a slab. Yes. Go on. Watch this does a zip off now. Once it realises it's free. See you later on. After that fish, and on the very next cast, two minutes had gone by before it ripped round again. That was the next cast. I didn't even see the bite because I was messing about. There's some fish out there now. If I could have a net in here, that's three fish in three casts. I don't believe it. One after another. One after another. I don't believe it. Oh, this feels like a better fish. It's rock solid. Rock solid. Oh, aye. Oh, aye. We learnt some stuff yesterday and we're putting it into practice today, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, go on. <laughs> it's that big it won't go in the net. That's a slab, I'm telling you now. Oh my God. Oh my God. It barely goes in the net. Look at the size of it, man. It's six pound, I'm telling you. Look at the size of that. What is that for a slab then? Oh my, that's one of the bigger ones out there. Wow. Deciding to fish the worm has definitely paid off and it's because they sit right on top of all the sediment, waiting for one of the many fish in the peg to pick it up. And with these hungry fish, it didn't take long. This is a this is a, a proper one. Won't move. Go on. Oh yeah. Proper one. Proper one. Solid. Rock solid.
Come on, big lad. Rock solid. When they're there, they're there. I bet there's a massive shoal out there. Best have that clutch set right as well, because if they want to go, they're going. There's another big one. Oh, it's a, it's a lump. Oh, look at it, man. I've never known bream fishing like it. The big ones just lozzock straight in that net. Look at the size of that. I've had two fish for about 12 pound. I don't believe it. Look at that. Oh my God. Dinner plate. Look at it. Look at that. It's, oh my God. It's seven pound. <laughs> Said that last time. Oh my. Oh my. Look at it. They are some slabs right there. This is what we came for. This is how furious these fish fed all day. Here's a six hour time lapse of the peg. Safe to say with a half decent rig, you're gonna do some bagging. And that's exactly what we did. Rock solid again. Full of fish, man. Full of fish. One after another. Don't believe it. This one's coming right at me. Right at me. Come on. Like I say, this is where this is where you lose fish. You just go steady. Wait till they give up. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Point blank refused to go in net. There you go. <laughs> Yes, look at that, beautiful fish, come on, beautiful, it's probably three and a half pound, it's not like the th things we've been catching, is it, gone, alright this is my last cast, because I'm soaked up bone, no point in putting brolly up because it get turned inside out. After a remarkable couple of days, it was time to leave. But the best thing is I get to take all the knowledge that I've learned with me. Now knowing the bottom is soft sediment, the method feeder would be off the cards in future and I'd be sticking to the normal feeder rig but slightly tweaked with a shorter and stiffer hook length. Coupled with baits that will sit on top of the sediment, I think my first £100 bag of bream would definitely be on the cards this year. The last couple of days has been the most insightful couple of days fishing I've ever had in my life. Seeing how the fish respond to the implementation of bait and the noise that it makes was crazy. I'd always had the inkling that that was the case, but seeing it first hand was going to change my style of fishing forever. Seeing how fast a shoal of bream can take over a peg and completely empty it of bait was also unbelievable. So a hike in the amount of bait going in is definitely going to be necessary in future. But the best thing by a mile was that all the hard work I'd put in to develop the camera system had paid off. 
showing me things I couldn't have dreamed of and debunking a bunch of myths along the way. So the only thing left to do is to figure out where we're going next.